Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 123 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to answer your question, or shall I say fear, about being at greater risk for the coronavirus if you're on immunosuppressant or biologic therapies. Now, I've actually seen this question asked a lot online in various Facebook groups, and frankly, I was curious myself. Hopefully, you're fully aware that COVID-19 is a big deal. It's now officially deemed a global pandemic by the World Health Organization with confirmed cases in all 50 states of the U.S. as of the date this podcast airs. No matter where you live, people are starting to get nervous, and some are pretty panicked. In my own county outside of Philadelphia, we're currently on lockdown with schools, universities, and non-essential businesses closed. Residents have been asked to stay home for a 14-day period. This was triggered because a doctor tested positive after seeing a number of patients locally, and then a local police officer became infected. And unfortunately, the number has continued to grow. So if you've thought this was no big deal, I urge you to reconsider. Do not dismiss this as simply another cold or flu. Or worse yet, do not think that COVID-19 is a hoax. You can certainly read more about what's going on in North Italy, as well as what my friend Ambra, who is living in Cremona, Italy, about an hour south of Milan, is saying to people who think that this is not something we need to take seriously. And I'm going to link to her articles on the show notes for today's episode. Nor should you assume that you're not at risk because you're younger. Though the risk of death increases with age and other health issues, there are younger, healthy people in very serious condition with COVID-19. And you have to think about others in your community who are immunocompromised, battling cancer, living with organ transplants, and also the elderly. What could end up being a couple of weeks of not feeling great for you could very well be life-ending for other people. And I get it. Naturally, people are nervous and asking questions online about, how the virus could impact them. Heck, I'm doing the same exact thing. The reality is that we aren't always getting more helpful information with the 24-hour news cycle focused predominantly on reporting new cases. Fortunately, I'm in contact with doctors who have been able to provide me some valuable insight. Some of these colleagues are currently doing a ton of research on the virus while others are in touch with physicians working on the front lines in outbreak areas. Like you, I wondered about those who are most vulnerable, especially given that some in our community are on biologic or immunosuppressant medications for eczema, psoriasis, and other chronic skin rash conditions. Though I found a bit of guidance online, I decided to reach out to some experts we've had on the show to get their two cents to share with you. So here is my exact question that I sent Dr. Peter Leo, you know, one of my absolute favorite recurring guests on the Healthy Skin Show. I asked Dr. Leo, I've gotten a lot of questions and concerns from listeners who are on biologic drugs like Dupixin or Humira about the COVID-19 virus. Do you know if someone taking these are at greater risk of getting sick from the virus? And Dr. Leo took time out of his very busy schedule to write me back. And not only that, he gave me permission to share his entire unedited response with you. Dr. Leo wrote, Hi, Jen. This is a key question for sure. While there is no official guidance yet, we feel pretty good about the more targeted biologic agents such as Dupixent, Trimphia, Cosentix, etc., I'm a little more concerned about the tumor necrosis inhibitors, such as Humira, even though those are not as worrisome as the true immunosuppressants, such as cyclosporine, azotheoprine, and methotrexate. As the modern biologics do not deeply or fully suppress the immune system, we think that the risk is probably not much greater than for those not on those medications. In fact, there are some studies looking at actually using some anti-inflammatory approaches to minimize the severe inflammatory reaction from the coronavirus. It may actually prove to be helpful in protecting some patients. 
At this time, I'm not changing anyone who is truly in need of these, but I am trying to wean down my patients on conventional immunosuppressants such as cyclosporine when possible. You guys, I am so grateful that I have the opportunity to share a response like this with all of you, especially at such a critical time. If you've been worried about this and had this question running through your head, I hope that the response from Dr. Leo helps you rather than allowing you to continue being maybe unnecessarily afraid of this. But also, too, if you are taking an immunosuppressant, it will help provide you that impetus to reach out to your doctor. As you guys know, I'm not a doctor. And though I am lucky enough to be able to share information like this with you, what I and even Dr. Leo share is for information purposes only. Ultimately, you need to speak with your doctor in order to determine the right course of action for you. Do not just stop taking your medication without the guidance of your physician just because you read online that it could make you susceptible. Generally speaking, some medications should not be stopped cold turkey, and I know this from past experience in my early 20s taking an SSRI. And that is, yes, admittedly a different medication, but that's why you must work with your doctor. That said, it is clear that there is a concern present for people taking tumor necrosis factor inhibitors and immunosuppressants. But as I sat and thought about Dr. Leo's email, I realized you might not know what drugs fall into which category. So if you're unfamiliar with what drugs constitute tumor necrosis inhibitors, that list includes Humira, Embril, Remicade, Symphony, and Simzia. Immunosuppressants, on the other hand, include methotrexate, cyclosporine, azotheoprine, mycophenolate, and tacrolimus, which is pretty much used topically in atopic dermatitis. Now, here's a really interesting point. I was able to come across this one statement issued by the International Psoriasis Council. They have officially recommended that, quote, physicians discontinue or postpone use of immunosuppressant medications, end quote, as of March 11, 2020. As of the date of this podcast, I could not find any statement on the use of these medications from the National Eczema Association, the International Eczema Council, nor the National Psoriasis Foundations listed anywhere on their websites. So for every single listener, if you're wondering what to do here, here's what I suggest. No matter how many or few confirmed cases exist in your area, stay at home. This is the best option for all of us. Cancel your travel plans and stay at home for at least the next two weeks or whatever government officials in your area recommend. I realize what I'm asking, but we have to do this to stop the spread of COVID-19. If you are on any medications for your skin rashes, make a list of your concerns. Then call your doctor and speak with them directly to get the answers that you need. And remember... I cannot underscore this enough. Your case is not someone else's. Even if someone using the same medication as you posts online that their doctor recommended a certain course of action, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right course of action for you. You are different from them and your case is unique. It's not to say that you can't ask your doctor or shouldn't ask your doctor about what you've read and if they feel that that would apply to you. Always ask. Frankly, I feel like we've woken up in some sort of weird sci-fi movie, but this is our reality right now, and we have an opportunity to make smart choices, and that's why it's imperative that we act decisively. I hope that this information is helpful to you. If you know anyone using these drugs or you're a part of an online group where you can share this information, it's imperative that you share this episode. We must help keep each other informed in this rapidly changing environment with accurate information so that we can keep those who are most at risk safe. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic. So head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash one, two, three in order to leave your thoughts on COVID-19 and what you're doing to keep yourself healthy. You'll also see that I've linked up every single resource that I was able to find that is all in the body of the show notes. And I've actually got more information coming very soon on the show to help you out with this whole COVID-19 coronavirus craziness. 
and how to keep your skin as healthy and intact as possible in the process. So stay tuned. In the meantime, I wish you all good health in the coming days as we stay home and take care of ourselves and our community. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode.